Hello and welcome to the Vox News. I am Adi Tukumbo Akintayo. We kick off from the troubled Central African Republic. At least 70 people have been killed and dozens of houses torched in clashes between Muslim and Christian communities in border town, 100 kilometers west of Bongi. Police Commissioner of Mbaiki, Eli Mbailao, said Christians attacked Muslims after Seleka rebels passed through. The mayor of Boda confirmed the casualties and added that over 30 houses were burned. Despite African and French soldiers' best efforts to secure the capital city, Bongi, people were still packing up their belongings and fleeing the Muslim neighborhood of Miskine on Monday, fearful of sectarian violence. Looting, lynching and attacks on Muslims and their properties carry on in the neighborhood as mobs conduct revenge attacks. At the end of a two-day visit to South Sudan on Monday, the head of the United Nations peacekeeping operations, Heavy Latsos, stressed that priority must be given to implementing the cessation of hostilities agreement that was signed on January 23. He said there could be no other solution to the crisis in South Sudan other than a political one. Latsos met with President Savarkir and discussed different challenges brought on by the crisis. The United States also urged South Sudan's leaders to implement the ceasefire between the government and rebels as an advanced team of regional monitors arrived in the country. The U.S. also pressed for the quick release of the last four of a group of 11 detainees held on suspicion of trying to stage a coup. Authorities in Togo have seized nearly four tons of ivory, the task from over 500 dead elephants hidden in containers destined for Vietnam. The tusks, disguised as cashew nuts and timber, were found late last month, underscoring a flow of ivory to Asia that environmentalists warn is decimating the elephant populations and diplomats say also raise fear in conflict in Africa. Togo's environment ministry said the tusks were found in two seizures in the port of Lume, one on January 22 and another on January 28. Two Togolese and a Vietnamese were arrested, but it was not clear where the ivory came from. Hundreds of mining experts are meeting at Cape Town's Convention Center to discuss investment in African mining. The 4-day conference was opened on Monday by the mayor of Cape Town, Patricia De Lille. Investing in African mining in Daba is the world's largest mining investment conference and Africa's largest mining event, but the annual event is being overshadowed by major strike action which is crippling South Africa's platinum production. With no agreement between the unions and management in sight, the disruption is expected to continue. Among those attending the conference is the founder and CEO of Rangold, Mike Bristow. He talks about investing in Africa. You can't invest in Africa on the back of market perception. It's got to be a serious business for the long term. And uh, you know, I think we've seen that slowly. We're showing that we're serious about investing in Africa, about building partnerships with the host countries we invest in. We want to make return for shareholders. And what I've always said is if you want to invest in Africa, all stakeholders should benefit. You know, the governments, the treasury of those countries, and more importantly, the labor and communities in which we in, you know, work with. The African people also must uh, make the, the, the necessary effort to develop their, their, their own resources. But we need uh, the help of a uh, company like uh, 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 Rangold, and for me like uh, Rio Tinto. But uh, in addition to that, uh, the people also must do something. This is, uh, that will give the, a good result for, for everybody. We're still in South Africa. The world's top platinum producer, Anglo-American Platinum, has swung back to full profit. But as Sonia Leg reports, it may not last long. Fresh unrest across the whole of South Africa's platinum belt is threatening the air recovery. Platinum mines in South Africa have been operating well below par for three weeks. Strikes have crippled production and are hurting three major mining companies. Anglo-American Platinum is the biggest. Its latest results show it's back in profit, thanks to rising sales and a drop in the value of the South African rand. But CEO Chris Griffiths says it's been a struggle. As a group, we've delivered on our production commitments in 2013. Despite a number of headwinds, and I'd characterize this year's production as a strong performance 
in a challenging environment. We produced 2.32 million equivalent platinum refined ounces from our operations, which was a 5% increase year on year. From a 2012 base, which was impacted by the illegal industrial action, we've seen improvement in production in all the different areas of our business. Union members at Anglo-American Platinum, Impala Platinum and Lonmin are demanding their wages be doubled. The mining companies say that's unaffordable and unrealistic. Anglo-American is already cutting 1,400 jobs as part of its restructuring plan and it's wrestling with soaring costs and suppressed platinum prices. The latest strikes are hitting 40% of the world's platinum supply. Anglo-American says more cuts might be needed if they don't return to work soon. Actress and UNICEF ambassador Angie Hammond recently returned from a visit to Nicaragua where she traveled to bring attention to the horrors of child trafficking within the Central American country and across the globe. During her trip, Harmon traveled to the northern town of San Lucas, where she witnessed efforts to combat trafficking along the Honduran border and met children and adolescents leaders who demonstrated through skits, dancing and artwork how they educate their peers. She also visited Bluefields, a city affected by drug and human trafficking, and participated in a play about issues facing teens in the region. In Granada, the most visited tourist spot in the country, many children beg for food or money in the city center, increasing the risk for them to be sexually exploited and, in the worst case, trapped by traffickers. Hammond also met with three adolescent survivors of sexual abuse or exploitation and heard their stories. Every single one of you are extraordinary. And the more that you inform the people around you and your peers, we can also end the problem with, with human trafficking. It just, it makes me so, feel so wonderful to know that the future of the world looks like this. Janet Yellen was sworn in Monday to a term as chair of the U.S. Central Bank. She succeeds Ben Bernanke to become the first woman to head the Fed. A term as chair ends February 3, 2018. Yellen will testify before U.S. lawmakers on February 11 and again on February 13 in what will probably be her first public comments on monetary policy and the economy since her appointment. On our appointment last year, President Barack Obama was full of praise for Yellen. She is a proven leader, uh, and she's tough, not just because she's from Brooklyn. Uh, Janet is exceptionally well qualified for this role. Uh, she's served in leadership positions at the Fed for more than a decade. Let's talk football. Chelsea manager Jose Mourinho said his team had just a little horse in the race for the English Premier League title after his side won 1-0 one, one at title rivals Manchester City on Monday. Jose, it's looking increasingly like a free horse race for the title and your record head-to-head -head against Wenger and Pellegrini is vastly superior. I think you've lost once in 20 games. Two horses and a little horse. <laughs> and your little horse? A little horse that still needs milk and... Uh, and work and learn how to jump and you know two big horses and and a nice horse a horse that next season next season we can we can race what about the jockey the jockey yeah billy <laughs> <laughs> The happy one there. It's time for the latest celebrity news, including an autopsy shadowed in the death of actor Philip Seymour Hoffman. A new investigation into allegations involving Woody Allen. John Russell reports. An autopsy is scheduled on acclaimed stage and film actor Philip Seymour Hoffman, who was found dead in his Manhattan apartment on Sunday of an apparent drug overdose, an official said. The 46-year-old Oscar winner was discovered in the bathroom of his Greenwich Village apartment with a syringe in his arm. Two small bags of a substance thought to be heroin were found. New York City police are investigating Hoffman's death and were trying to determine the source of the substance that apparently killed an actor many considered one of the finest of his generation. A day after the shock of his sudden death, tributes to Hoffman continued pouring in. A bouquet of white roses was placed near the entrance to his home, while numerous stars in the music and film world took to social media to share their thoughts. Hoffman was 46 and is survived by three children. 
State prosecutors in Connecticut do not have an open investigation of Woody Allen, a spokesman said on Monday after the filmmaker's adult adopted daughter renewed allegations that he sexually abused her at the age of seven. A prosecutor decided after an investigation in 1993 not to charge Allen, who has denied the allegations. Legal experts have said the statute of limitations on the case probably has run out. Dylan Farrow, now 28, detailed the alleged abuse by Allen, now 78, in a letter published by the New York Times. She said the incident occurred at the Connecticut home of her mother, the actress and former Allen girlfriend, Mia Farrow. The buddy cop comedy Ride Along, starring Kevin Hart and Ice Cube, cruised to its third straight weekend at the top of the box office charts, out earning the new release, That Awkward Moment. Ride Along collected $12.3 million in ticket sales over what was a slow Super Bowl weekend at many theaters. That Awkward Moment finished third with $9 million in ticket sales. That film stars Zac Efron as one of the three friends who pledged to stay single. Well, that's about it on the Vox News for now. We're back with you shortly, but you can check us out online for more news and programs, voxafrica.co.uk. From me, it's goodbye.